Welcome everyone, we are still here with Jean Marco and we are talking about the history of angioplasty with Charles Dotters and Andreas Kronzik. This is the third episode of the series Voices from the Past, Messages to Build the Future. In the first two episodes we analyze who is Charles Dotters and why his method indeed didn't spread out in US. Now we are moving to Europe to discover how the daughter influence was analyzed in the European country and how Andreas Kranzing reached with his uh, dream. So, Jean, could you tell us more about the daughter influence in Europe, please? This start with uh, Eberhard Zeitler from Germany. He was convinced by the data published by Charlie Dotter and the oral presentation during international meeting that uh, this technique could have a future. He believed in this technique. Eva Zettler was working in hospital with uh, a vascular department with a huge number of beds only dedicated to vascular disease to patients with vascular disease. And they have an excellent relationship with the different uh, uh, colleagues working in this department. Then he moved to US to visit Charlie Dotter in order to learn the technique. Back in Germany, with a discussion with the team, he started to use a technique in patient with radial stenosis after lytic therapy. He was the first patient with a short stenosis. And then he extended the technique in patient with femoral disease, but in patient carefully select by all the team. Ebra Zeitler was working with all the team of the vascular department. And together they select the good candidate for this technique. So we can recall two concepts, teamwork approach and of course good selection of the patient exactly. that doctors didn't Egg. have. Exactly. And uh, he published the result in 141 Patient, we mean a large area of patient with a 70% of success, thanks to the selection of patient. And at this time, he start to teach the technique. And this technique start to be disseminated in Europe. So how did Andreas get to this ah, result? Now we have the name of Andreas. Good. Andreas at this time, Andreas Granzik was a fellow in the radiology department in Zurich. And of course, he was, he, 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 at this time, he was uh, 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 convinced that this technique had a future because of the result published by Eva Zettler. And he moved to Germany to visit Ebert Zettler and to learn from him. from him the daughter technique. It's great. And so it, this was the first move of Andreas, but I know that you met him many times and you discussed together. So can you tell us more about uh, his training and I think even the human qualities that lead to his success? Andreas has a solid formation on epidemiology statistic, internal medicine, vascular medicine. And in 1971, at this, at this time, he was fellow in the radiology department to complete his training. He was a very charismatic man and uh, had a great empathy for the patient. A cardiac surgeon ex-sending the head of the ca cardiovascular surgery department and uh, the head of the 
euh, Angiology Unit, Alfred Bollinger, appreciate his amazing work capacity, his determination and scientific rigor. So thanks to this quality, he had the full support of these two very important key players to initiate the dotectonic in Zurich. So in December 1971, he invited Bert Zettler to perform the first femoral angioplasty in Zurich. What happened? A complication. Distal embolization into the popliteal. First case, complication. Back. Axe Senning, the cardiac surgeon, and Alfred Bollinger, the head of the uh, uh, angiology department, provide him both support and confidence. Go ahead. So between 1972 and 1975, Anders continued treating patients with a daughter technique by engaging in the following action. First, commitment, determination to uh, resist adversity. Teamwork approach, strong work ethic, and continuous quest for improvement by a critical analysis of all the results. He spent a lot of time to exactly evaluate the result. Now, if you remember, the three pioneers, Charlie Dotter, Eva Zittler, and now Anders Gronzig, share the same vision. What should we be going? A non compliant cathet balloon catheter had to be found. The three the same vision, flexible catheter without the tip, a balloon, non compliant balloon that we can inflate to full atmosphere. Charlie Dotter in the US and Deborah Zittler in Germany face skepticism of the medical community. No future for this technique. No company express interest in this project. So, indeed, two of the three pioneers didn't get to the point, but Andreas, supported by colleagues, indeed he managed in some way, that I'm curious to discover, to reach finally the balloon catheter. So, can you tell us which are the, the, the main uh, characteristic that led him to succeed? Commitment, determination, is very important. And let's meet uh, a retired chemistry doctor, Enrich Oft. This man was an expert in PVC. I don't exactly what it PVC, okay. Polyvinyl chloride. Great. <laughs> and he engaged uh, uh, Andreas to move in this direction to use this material because it was a very strong material. So progressively, step by step, failure after failure, in his home, he succeeded in building a manual, flexible, single lumen catheter with, as a distal part, a non compliant balloon reaching a predefined maximum length and diameter for a pressure of four atmosphere. He was he done with this material, glue, and he done himself the balloon. The first uh, human transluminal balloon angioplasty was performed in February 1974 
to dilate the femoral artery critical stenosis. For the next two years and a half, two years and a half, each balloon catheter was custom made for each and developed patient. He looked at the radio to image on the radio of the patient and and made catheter. And Andrea spent a lot of time with the patient and he, have, he analyzed scientifically the results above all the failure or complication, trying to understand why he failed. It's a, a, a real nice story about his training and uh, his human qualities. And uh, I, I, I think that the messages that we can extract from, uh, from Andreas is that we have to keep in mind clearly which is the, the outcome that we want to achieve and exactly. how we can and why we want. And then define a sort of work axis uh, to collaborate with people. But above all, as you, as you underlined uh, in your speech, commitment and determination, because these are fundamental to live our dream, to improve our work, to learn and to share what we do every day and we discover. And of course, the teamwork approach, I will never stop to, to, to recall this word because I think it's, it's very important, and a continuous quest for improvement by a critical analysis of the result. A dream. We need to have a dream. It's very important. Critical analysis scientifically, the result. Very important. And strong work ethic. This is one of the quality of a strong work ethic. It is very important. It's what I learned from him. So at this point of the journey, we moved from daughters to Andreas, but now I'm very curious to understand how Andreas moved from femoral arteries to coronaries and how he reached to get his dream. So let's stay with us for the last part of this interview and we will discover together how the dream of Andreas Granting became true. Thank you, Jeanne. Thank you, Gala.